Welcome back to Maywood, everybody. And now I want to tell you about Maywood's most popular program of all, maple sugaring. In the late winters, March, February, the sap begins to run in the maple trees. And behind me is the Maywood Maple Forest. There are over 95 trees that are mature enough to be tapped for maple sap, which is boiled down into maple syrup. Particularly, the species of choice is Acer saccharum, to use a Latin word, or as you might recall it, the sugar maple. The sugar maple trees here have a very sweet sap which begins to flow as thawing occurs outside. Once the air temperature really rises above 32 degrees on a more permanent basis, sap will begin to rise from the roots under the ground and flow into the tree. And we're going to take a little bit closer look at that process and also give you an opportunity to participate in it yourself. As we take a closer look at one of our maple trees here on the property, there are a couple of ways to identify a maple tree, even if you don't have the leaves on it. The sugar maple bark is probably its most distinctive feature. Notice how this bark is almost peeling away, like it has a skin problem, if you will. I always uh, say to the kids that visit us, the fourth graders, that uh, this skin is very flaky, flaky bark, if you will. Kind of like if you have a, a flaky brother or sister. That's a good way to remember the flakiness of a maple tree. And also, as you take a look uh, gradually up to the top of the tree, the maple has branches that come out on all sides, uh, particularly the near side of the tree because it is the south side. It's getting the most sun, but it's a very gnarled, huge look. It isn't quite like the oak tree, which just has uh, the branches coming out at the very top. Also, a difference between this and the, and the oak is that there are still leaves on some of the oak trees this time of year. As you take a closer look, another identification mark of our trees here on the property would certainly be holes left by tapping it. A larger hole, which is a finger or a thumb size hole, we call that a spile hole. That's what we drill into the tree a couple of inches and we add a spile into the tree so that the sap can be drawn out. You may also notice smaller holes on maple trees like this. And these will you'll find in any kind of a maple forest, even if it's not tapped for sugar. Well, these holes come from a bird, the yellow-bellied sapsucker. It's a type of woodpecker that, given its name, you might think it sucks sap, but actually that's an error. What the animal is really doing is it's drilling into the tree, hoping that insects will get stuck, caught in the sap, and then the bird will come back at a later date and it will eat, devour the insects in the sap for its food. Uh, kind of a unique adaptation that bird's gotten for survival. Well, here we are in front of probably the most important part of any maple syruping farm, the sugar house, or as we call it, the sugar shack. This is a very important part of this farm, and indeed it is a farm when you think about it. Wisconsin is the number three maple syruping producing state in the entire nation. New York and Vermont are one and two. The maple syruping farm operation would not be complete without taking the raw sweet sap, boiling off the water to produce the syrup. And next to me is also a very large pile of wood, a huge pile of wood. That will be consumed in the process of boiling away the water. To take a gallon of maple syrup, uh, the finished product, you need 40 gallons of sap. A process of burning at least eight to 10 hours is required to take those 40 gallons of sap boiling away the water to produce the syrup. And you can continue to boil it longer and you'll get molasses, even longer than that, and you'll get a crystalline uh, maple sugar. And of course, many of us have seen maple sugar or maybe maple candy. All of those are important products and Wisconsin is a viable member in that industry. Now, there is a way to participate in Maywood's maple sugaring program. All fourth graders in the entire county are invited to come visit us in the month of March. You just make an appointment with me, and our phone number is 459-3906, and we have special maple sugaring tours that have been very popular for the years. In fact, Maywood has been uh, established statewide as a, with a good reputation for its maple sugaring program the last 10 years.
call a bit and a brace. Here's the drill bit and this is the brace. Everyone will get a chance to try this out for themselves after you watch me. Now here's one of the important things that you need to understand when you use the bit and the brace. First of all, this point on here is a little bit dangerous. It's also fragile. You don't want to break it off and you don't want to uh, pass it to a friend like this and say, oh, here, here you go. Oh, oh, oh. You know, you got to be careful. Also, when I'm drilling, I'm about waist high. See this really large, rounded part of me that sticks straight out? That's uh, my stomach. So my waist is in there. And as I push this in just a little bit, I'm going to use my right hand on the end of this, and my left hand will do the turning. Notice how my feet are spread apart. That gives me some nice uh, leverage and balance. And I'm going to turn it clockwise into the wood. You guys know clockwise, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm drilling into the wood. Does anybody remember how far I'm supposed to drill in? Remember at the very beginning I showed you a spile in the tree and I, Yeah, how far is that? How many inches? Or you remember, Erica? An inch and a half. Not half an inch, but an inch and a half. You can also rest your stomach against here like I'm doing, especially if you got a real big gut like me. <laughs> okay, I bought about an inch and a half, and I can go out the other way. And as I pull out, boom, there we go. Nice tree. Is this tree going to give me sap? No. Afraid not. This is a dead tree. But I want everyone to get a chance to try this. You're going to line up behind one of these poles here. We're going to make three lines. And then I'll give you a, a bit and a brace, and you can get started. Okay. Okay? There's some more people can go over here. I'll pass these out. Okay, you guys can start here. Good. Why don't you get the line right behind her? There's plenty of room over by her. Yep, you can do that one. Remember to do about waist high. There you go. Okay, you guys can start here. And adults, we can just sort of help supervise here to make sure nobody gets killed. Clockwise, there we go. Dude, that's not a tree, man. There's one in every group. Yeah, it's fantastic. Look at her go. <laughs> okay, what's your name again? Freddy, right? Clockwise. There you go. you all to see how a, a bag looks on the, on the modern system of us collecting sap from the maple tree. This is indeed a maple tree. Do you guys remember how to tell the difference from a maple tree and other trees? Leaves. Leaves. That helps. Can you find a leaf around here? Yeah. Yeah, in there. They're kind of crunched down and some of them aren't even maple leaves. It's not a good time of the year to find leaves. You found an oak. Well, maybe this is an oak tree. Anybody else know how to tell a maple tree in the winter? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love that answer. Except that's what the third graders say, not the fourth graders. <gasps> Hope for holes in the tree. But what if you get to a forest where people haven't been and they drilled holes in the tree? How do you tell? Big tree. Cassie. The bark? Yes, the bark. That's a great answer. The bark on a maple tree is kind of gray in color and it's flaky. It almost looks like it's peeling off, like it has a bad case of a sunburn and it's coming off. There's another way to tell, and that's because of the branches. It's got lots of branches all over the maple tree. And sometimes there are indeed little holes on a tree like this that aren't made by people. They're about the same size as a pencil, and they're made by a special kind of woodpecker. A special kind of woodpecker. It's called a yellow-bellied sapsucker. By the name, what do you think the yellow-bellied sapsucker sucks? Tell by the tap sucker suck set. You'd be wrong though. Actually, they're drilling into the tree and sap will collect in there. Then little tiny critters crawl up in there. They get stuck in the sap and they come back and they eat them like an ant or something. So they should call them yellow belly uh, bug suckers, I thought. That would be a good answer for that. But they're not. He does, this guy doesn't like my jokes. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, that's better. That's better. 
Okay, now let's take a good look at the sap. Nice and clear, as you guys tasted a little earlier. Looks just like water. Most of it is water. This type of bag works perfect for collecting sap. And as you can see today, I think there's a little bit of sap coming out. It's all over the tree. See how we had to we had to drill two holes in this tree. This first hole wasn't drilled correctly. It wasn't really put in there at the right angle. So we re-drilled a hole, but sometimes some comes out of the top hole and goes into this bag as well as what's in the regular hole. Yes, Katie. Um, how come see, is sap sticky? sticky? Sap is definitely sticky. Yeah, just a little bit. It's not like glue, <laughs> but it's a little bit sticky. I want you to come on over here. And I need a volunteer to take this. We're going to empty it out. You can go ahead and try that one. Ashley, let's go and dump this into the bag. Or the bucket. You actually... Oh. Ah, so cold. Can you get well, if you want to see them jumping okay, in there. Uh, uh, now hold one corner with your hand, okay? Mm -hmm. And the other corner with the other hand. Carefully dump that in there. Yeah. All right, nice job. Okay, cool. Got that up. There's some more on there. Now you tell me to put that back on the tree. There's some more on there, brother. And we're going to pick two people to carry this. Okay. Erica? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the sap is dripping very nicely today. <laughs> if you want to get more sap from the tree, you gotta cut, you gotta hug it. So squeeze that tree real hard. There you go. I love you, there. tree. Yeah. You're my best friend. Yeah. Oh, look at it drip now. It's going like crazy. Look at it drip. You see? I was you thought I was kidding. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, let it go. It's probably suffocating. See, it worked. It worked. A lot of sap. You want to carry this one here? Who has to carry one? You carry one? Okay. Carry that one over, and Katie, you be in charge of it. Ashley, are you okay? This is my family little honey. Yeah. Me carry it. Most of the trees at Maywood have plastic bags um, collecting the sap on. We hang a bucket, we hang a plastic bucket underneath the plastic bag because sometimes squirrels nip holes in the bag. And instead of, that way if a squirrel would bite a hole in the bag, it, we would still be able to collect it in the bucket. I want you to be careful right behind the railing because the drop-off is very steep right here. What we wanted you to see in this part of the area is how we can tap trees that are very hard to get to. Remember the number one state that produces maple sugar? What was that? Vermont. Vermont, exactly. There's a lot of hills. It's a beautiful, beautiful state, but there's a lot of hills and even mountains, and it's hard to get to all of their trees. So they came up with the system of tapping trees so they don't have to climb all of them. And this is a gravity pipeline or a spaghetti line. Along from the tree here right in front of us, you can see the purple line going down the hillside to a larger blue line. This afternoon I emptied that drum. It was full to the top. It had 50 gallons in it. It was actually overflowing, had a big chunk of ice in it, too. So this is an important thing. And you can see it looks like somebody has fallen down here a couple of times. <laughs> There's still volunteers from 94 we haven't found yet that are down there. Hard to find a teepee like this. They use these out in the plains for the most part. But this gives us a little bit of an idea of the Native Americans, the Indians, and how they would do the process of maple sugaring and maple syruping. How could they take the sap and boil away the water. Does anyone know how they did that? Erica? 
Okay, that would be the make that would make sense, wouldn't it? They fill up their log with the sap, and they just take it and they put it right in the fire. No. 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 <laughs> what's the problem with that? Cassie, what's the matter with that? Maybe those two bricks, they, they would light the fire and then they put that over that. Okay, if they had, they, they probably wouldn't have bricks like this, but maybe they had big rocks like that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or standing up. Or like two big sticks on you. <laughs> Give you a hint. The answer is in the rocks. The answer is in the rocks. Oh, oh, start the rocks. rocks. Nope, the fire's already started. <laughs> what do you think, Cassie? I, don't, I don't think that's the one. Oh, I know! What? Set the rocks underneath there. Set the rocks Knock underneath it. there? So, okay, not gonna that's, get hot enough. Nope. Nice. Heat up the rocks and put the rocks in the dirt. Put the rocks in the sap! There you go! Okay, they would take the rocks from the fire and... Oh, man, that's hot. Oh, like that. oh, oh, hold that. Oh, oh, jeez, it's hot. <laughs> No, it's not hot. Hot rock. <laughs> no, that's stupid. Oh, for a minute. Be hot anyways. <laughs> for a minute there. They could use a tool like this and try oh, and pick oh. up a hot rock, put it in there. Everybody go. Okay, good. And then it boils away the water. Just like a sauna. You guys ever been in a sauna? No. Nope. Yeah. You know what one is? Yeah, I hope yeah. You, okay. you have? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You guys must be I from, ran out in the snow. You must be from a really good part of town, huh? You have saunas? Well, it takes a long time to boil away the water that way, not like we do with the evaporator. So usually the Indians would boil away all the water. They didn't make maple syrup for the most part because it's hard to store unless you wanted to carry around like a deer spleen with syrup in it. <laughs> so what they did was they boiled it all the way down to maple sugar or maple candy. That way it could be dried and they could keep it throughout the whole year. Pretty zoomy, huh? I think that's cool. Everybody go, wow. Wow. <laughs> cool. <laughs> now we got to do some walking. I need some people to carry that bucket. We have two different evaporators here. Does that help you out? Okay, come on in, everybody. I want you to get in nice and close here to the evaporator. You remember from our program that the evaporating house, we call it the sugar house or the sugar shack. And Ed Waymeyer over here is our longtime caretaker, and he takes care of the sap. Now, this white stuff you see in the air, what do you think this is? Water. Can... Smoke and water. Okay, it's one of those two. I'll give you, you got to narrow it down. Katie? Water. Yeah, exactly. It's water. It's steam evaporating. Now, remember, back to the slide program, if we evaporate or take away all the water, what's left behind? What's going to be left behind? Yeah? Sugar? Sugar! She's got it. Fantastic. Sap is made of two things, sugar and water, and we want the sugar left behind. Does anybody remember what percent of sap is sugar? Katie? 100. Not quite 100. What percent of oh, sap yeah, okay. is sugar? 10. Even a little bit less. 99. Okay, it's about 98 or 99 percent water, and then for, therefore at least 1 to 2 percent sugar. It's about 2 percent, maybe 3 percent in a really good year. If you guys have a cold, see, this is good to breathe that steam in there. I got a cold. Nice and it doesn't hurt your lungs. It fills you up your, your body with all these good healing spirits of steam. Now, I want you guys to get a chance. Once you look at that, step back, and we'll let you taste some of this sap that we have uh, saved over here. Sure. <laughs> I'll try it. Take one of those and pass it back to somebody. Hey guys. Pass it back. Once you get a cup, you guys get one? Oh. Let me get one. Oh, sugar. Keep them going. Keep them going. We got more, but keep them going. You guys go. Once I give you a little bit, step back, okay, so everybody gets a taste. 
Well, what's in sap? Sugar. Yeah? Sugar water. Sugar water. I love sugar water. Stuff inside the evaporator is just a little bit warm. If you were at home trying to make some sugar water, you could take a big glass of water, add just a pinch of sugar, and you'd have about the same taste as what you have now. And if you wanted to get rid of or evaporate the water, with your adult supervision from your mom or dad, you could boil away that water on the stove. And the only thing left would be, again, that pinch of sugar. And that's exactly what Ed's doing over here. This takes all day and even into the night to boil down about 100 gallons. This tank behind me, right here, that old milk holding tank, is where we drain the sap. Remember when you're up above, we saw the washing machine. The washing machine will drain the sap as it's filtered into this holding tank, which holds a couple of hundred gallons, into where the tank is. Ed can move it from the big tank to the evaporator ha by hand. He just puts in about five gallons at a time, like he's doing right now. This is a very complex and highly scientific system. Remember the other filtering system that I showed you was a ringer washing machine? This one is an old screen from like a, a window. And you can see how that filters out, even a couple of chunks in there. See that? I think there's uh, mostly wings and legs. Anybody find any of that in your in your cup? I don't tell you that until after we drink it. Protein. Yeah, it's good for you. I'm joking. There is one thing I wanted to show you right before we finish. You guys stay here. You're gonna park again. Park again. All right, I'll come back over here. You gonna hold? Oh, hey, all right, thanks. A couple of different things. First of all, last year, 1995, 1995, we tapped about 90 trees. That's about the same number of trees that we've tapped this year. In that year, we used 125 spiles. So in other words, the reason that number's bigger, some trees had more than one spile in them. Some have three or four even. Good sap, huh? Oh, yeah. All right. Gallons of syrup that we produced last year, 35 gallons of syrup. That's a lot of maple syrup. But to get that syrup, we had to collect 1,400 gallons of sap. That's a whole lot of sap. Now, who can uh, do this in your mind? Think real hard now. If we had made 35 gallons of sap syrup from this 1,400 gallons of sap, how many gallons of sap does it take to make just one gallon of syrup? Got to do some division in your mind here. How many gallons of sap will it take to make a gallon of syrup? Any guesses? I see these wheels turning, and that's good. That's what we like to see. Any guesses? They're working hard. Any math geniuses out there? Sap on top of the evaporating pan. We use an instrument. What does this look like? Yes. It looks like a thermometer. And what does a thermometer do? Mm -hmm. It tells the temperature. This doesn't take the temperature of the sap. This actually takes the density reading of the sap, density or thickness. Now, you've all seen maple syrup on your table. Is it thick or thin? Thick, thick. It's thick, especially when you compare it to water. So if this is very watery, like sap, I'll drop this in, and it's going to sink to the bottom of the pan. But as the water evaporates and sugar is left behind, it'll thicken. The density increases, and so when I drop this in, it won't float. It won't sink, it will float. And there are numbers on here that indicate when we can take it off that evaporator. If we leave it on there too long, it's going to burn. 
it's going to get scorched and it won't taste very good so we have to throw it out so this instrument is very important and we call it a hydrometer that's the special instrument and this is the most important thing in the whole process this hydrometer knowing when to take off the sap from the evaporating pan and then we can bottle it and we'll filter it one more time as well so this process we filter it a lot yes um do you buy that at the store or this i have to specially order it all the way from uh, vermont that comes from a long distance it costs like 30 bucks for that there is one official thing that we need to do i forgot to tell you this we have to pass a test before we get to try our uh, our well i didn't tell you what the reward was did i it's pancakes or syrup. you think so well we'll have to find it. see all these things on the left side of the board these are these names or or descriptions that are in pink have a matching picture on the right hand side so in order for us to get our reward we need to complete this group of 12 matching items now i'd like to just simply go along the, the group here and we can have everybody try it if they want no pressure you don't have to do this the biggest thing is to give it a try you don't have to if you're not right that's okay uh we'll start over with uh cassie um. Sugar Shack, the building where it all takes place. Absolutely. Good job. Maple syrup, and then you can go out and have a seat and we'll enjoy this. Go ahead. you guys to do is we know you just came from uh, school and you had lunch recently the key is to not give you a big pancake breakfast or lunch the key isn't pancakes at all we want you to taste the real maple syrup that we make here and see how you like it compared to the stuff you might find at home maybe some of you guys make this at home a lot of people do in Wisconsin 